We call bilingual education in California is almost entirely, 99% of it is transitional bilingual education. Under that system, at least for Spanish language students, it amounts to Spanish only classes. The children are given virtually no English when they start school, generally 30 minutes a day or sometimes an hour a day. All the rest of the time is spent in their native language, which is generally Spanish. And that's the reason that they don't learn English. Now, let me give you some statistics on the current system. These are the official government statistics from the Office of Bilingual Instruction in Sacramento. Today in California, a quarter of all the children in public schools don't know English. And of the ones who don't know English, only 5 or 6 percent learn English each year. 95 percent of the children who start a given school year not knowing English end that school year still not knowing English. And these are the official government statistics. The current system we have is a disaster. The only people who support it are the people who make the hundreds of millions of dollars, probably close to $2 billion, going to the current system to pay teachers not to teach children English. And that's the reason we have an opposition Dr. campaign. Dr. Martinez, you have been involved in bilingual education in several school districts. Yes, I, I'm. Do you know of that uh, type of money I'm being made? I'm absolutely shocked to hear these allegations from Mr. Unz. Uh, I've been in bilingual education all throughout the state of California. I've actually worked in them, seen them, work with the parents. Uh, it's simply not true that children are not being taught English. You know, we have a lot of research data that's come out recently that has shown our students, uh, many of them are not learning math like they should. I don't see people putting initiatives to do away with teaching math. Uh, we also have a lot of evidence to show that our children uh, need additional help in science. I don't see anyone proposing that we do away with science. I think the issue is we fix, we, you know, we're trying to fix the problem of educating children in the state of California. Legislating and mandating and intruding into the business of school districts uh, as to what they can or cannot do, I think, is, is a larger issue. Before I, you go, I applaud the, the recent decision. But this was the question. Are teachers being paid more not to teach English than those who, are, who do teach English? It's even worse That's than that. Right now, it's under, under the current system, schools are paid more money so long as children do not learn English. If a child successfully learns English, the school loses money. And that's the reason they claim it takes a child 10 years to learn English, Mr. or I'd 7 like years. Those are the so facts. I'd You're referring to the fact to that, one, that school so. districts are funded according to needs that are identified. LEP and the status. Larger, the larger number of LEP students they have, that triggers a certain, just like the poverty index triggers funding, just like the mobility index triggers funding. There are a whole array of program needs that are identified, each of which has a minuscule amount of money, according to schools, that go into offering their programs. That is nothing compared to the expense of a school district having to go out and hire teachers who are trained in bilingual. So saying that it costs more is simply not a bad In other argument. words, you're saying yes, it's the schools the, I, are paid more money so long as children do not learn English. That is the current no, system. Actually, I'd, I'd like to respond to a couple things that, that were brought up here in this wonderful discussion. Um, the first thing is um, the amount of money that is currently in bilingual education programs will continue in Ron Unz's untested experiment. All the money that's currently spent on bilingual education will go into his one-year immersion program, plus the state will appropriate $50 million more a year in addition to, for these individuals who pledge to tutor children in English. Now, in addition, he says that our supporters are bilingual educators. We are honored to have support by the California Teachers Association, by the PTA, and also by the League of Women Voters, and which California School Boards and the Scout California School Boards Association. We Association. have every major educational organization, and that's because teachers know how to teach children best. And they know that a one-year English immersion sink or swim program, when you mix children of all different ages, all different cultural backgrounds, all different languages spoken, you put them in one class, they're taught English for one year only. They fall behind in math and science and all the other subjects that we want our children to learn is not the way to do it. And I want to also bring up one point um, that, that was a good point that you brought up, Ron, the 95% um, remediation rate, because that's something really important to talk about. That means that only 5% of the children after one year move out of bilingual education, which shows why Ron Unz's one year only sink or swim program will not work 
because children need more than yet. Yeah, Ron just, has a story to tell about his background in this country. Do well, you mind no, no, sharing but, that? Oh, certainly. I mean, for example, my mother was born in Los Angeles. She grew up not speaking mm -hmm. English. She learned a little bit of English before she started school, and then she picked it up very easily and graduated college with a degree in English literature. But I'm not talking about just one story. I'm talking mm -hmm. about every other country in the world uses the sort of short-term intensive language program that we're talking about. No other country anywhere in the u world uses what we call bilingual education because it doesn't work. Now, either every other country in the world is wrong or we're wrong. And since you yourself have admitted that the current system has an annual failure rate in teaching English of 95%, That's you can, exactly see, you can see why no other country uses this approach. Yeah, one thing I wanted to say is that I think we're very lucky here in California and in the United States because I think we are blessed with the highest educated professionals in the educational establishment. You know, my mother taught public school for over 30 years, and I know the amount of expertise we have in this country is fantastic. It's phenomenal. And we have very good bilingual education programs that work. First there are right. room, there is room for improvement. 95% failure rate can be improved. That, that is not a 95% <laughs> failure rate. I have That's to say something. There's no other country in this world that has the kind of population that we do. There's no other country oh, that yes, has the, not, that does not have You've the equivalent of, of what we have. Excuse me. Well, well, we sure. should get back to what's on the ballot on June, which yeah. is this initiative. That's correct. And, you know, and population. What it's right. But from higher education perspective, I mean, we, we're trying in higher education to increase the numbers of students that we serve who come from underrepresented yeah. populations. In particular, we, as we look to the future, we need to be sure that we can depend upon this two million students who are coming through the system uh, particularly those who are coming with limited English proficiency skills, that they be adequately prepared to enter the college ranks and to be able to achieve at a level equal or commensurate to those of their other native English speakers. That's my interest, and therefore I think it's, it's imperative that we go back to the, the issue of you know, who knows best how to teach children, and, and that's the teachers in the schools. Yet, uh, go ahead. If Ron. I can respond to that point, because higher education obviously is the focus of this uh, topic right mm -hmm. now. When we look at students in the public schools in California, most of the students in the public schools who don't know English are Spanish-speaking, but actually the others come from 140 different language groups. So in other words, we're talking about students who don't know English who speak a total of 140 different languages. The only group of students that in large numbers are placed in these allegedly beneficial bilingual education programs where they're taught in their native language are Spanish-speaking students. Pretty much all the other students who don't know English are taught English as soon as they start school in programs very much like what we're proposing. Now, the interesting fact is that of all the immigrant students in California, the Spanish-speaking immigrants who allegedly get the benefits of bilingual education do the worst in school. They have the highest dropout rate, the lowest test scores, and the lowest rate of admission to college. In other words, these are the students who are failing right now. The reason they're failing is they're not being taught to read and write English. Well, if, if and, and Proposition 227 is not going to fix that. I mean, I think that's why support in the Latino community has dropped 21 points in the polls from December to February. You know, you're not even at 50% right now in the Latino community. And I think also that, uh, you know, the state attorney general, Dan Lundgren, just came out and said that Proposition 227 is far too restrictive, that it is a straitjacket on teachers, and after the State Board of Education's decision on March 13th, he didn't see a need for Proposition 227. If I can clarify that point, you've raised an important point, the State Board of Education's decision. What they did was to say that since the law governing bilingual education in California had expired 11 years ago, they would stop enforcing that law. The only reason they said they would stop enforcing that law is because of the pressure of our initiative. Nothing has changed legally in the last 11 years. There is no law governing bilingual education in California and hasn't been for 11 years. Despite that, the right. bilingual education industry, which makes hundreds of millions of dollars from this failed government program, has successfully forced all school districts to use bilingual education. We've had a system of mandatory bilingual education in which only four school districts, after years of effort and hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal expenses, have won the right to teach children English as soon as they start school. And right now, the State Board of Education has said that teachers and local school districts need the flexibility. They don't need a one-size-fits-all state-mandated program. Well, they, let, wait, let me okay, finish. Sure. They need the flexibility to decide how to teach the children. And teachers know best. And again, you brought up the money. 
but all the money that's currently being spent, and I want people to be clear on this on bilingual education, is going from the current program to your program, and that the state, the independent state legislative analyst says this. It's not coming from my campaign. Y you, Plus, yeah. you're spending $50 million a year on something, uh, you know, that, that's going to give money to people who pledge to tutor a child. And in addition, where Proposition 227 has been tried, which is in Westminster County, which is in the Orange County School District, it has failed. They had to petition to get another year, or I think another three years, because children did not learn English in one year. So what we're saying is we really want our children to learn English. We both agree on this point, Ron. I know we do. Um, and we sincerely agree, both of us. But we know that Proposition 227 is not the way to do it. I think 